people. Sorry for my delay. I was having a little bit of technical difficulty, as usual. And I just wanted to, um, I never made these before. <laughs> so I'm a little, I'm gonna be checking my recipe. Usually after I make something two or three times, then I have it by memory. But this is a new recipe that my friend Jean gave me. We're all trying to think of new ways to cook fish. And a codfish is a healthy fish. It's a white fish. It comes from the cold water areas. And um, it doesn't have, I think, all the mercury that a lot of the warmer fishes, uh, the warmer areas that fish like dolphin and mahi-mahi have and tuna. So anyway, I thought I would try something new. This seems relatively simple, but I was thinking this would go great with some fresh coleslaw. I'm actually going to do a um, like a wedge, blue cheese wedge salad with tomatoes and crushed bacon because my grandchildren would probably enjoy that more than coleslaw. Now there's potatoes in this recipe, so I really don't think you need another starch because the fish and the potatoes are going to be all combined in this in this cake. So I think you you'll be fine without any more <laughs> carbohydrates in this um, meal. So anyway, it's very simple. I actually had my codfish cooking on the stove in a, in a frying pan with, I put some butter, just added some salt and pepper and squeezed some lemon, lemon. And I actually left the rinds in there to just, I covered it and I let it simmer for a couple of minutes, just so it's flaky. So not long at all, five, seven minutes the most. And again, the, um, the codfish should be very flaky very flaky fish. Now, my daughter actually bought this <laughs> um, frozen packages at uh, a local supermarket here, organic, of course, and I think those are great in a pinch, and I, I taste tested this already, and the fish tasted very good. So when they're flash frozen and they're individually wrapped and organic, um, I think that that's uh, the best way if you do have to buy frozen. And now she lives in North Carolina outside of, uh, uh, she's not near the water. So the thing is, she doesn't have access <laughs> to uh, as much fresh seafood, but like I do in Florida, but again, these cold water fishes are available, you know, in most uh, markets. So the recipe calls for, I'm doubling the recipe actually, so it calls for two potatoes for every pound of codfish. So you boil your potato, peel them, boil them. I, I cut them in small pieces so they cook quicker. And I let those potatoes cool. And like I said, the codfish, I actually simmered, covered with lemon and butter, a little salt and pepper, until it was flaky, drained it. And I put that in, in this bowl. So you can see it here. I hope I'm getting you okay. Now, I added two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley. I'm going to use about a quarter of a cup of scallions, green onions. Now, again, I'm doubling this recipe. So, um, if you're just doing a pound of codfish, I have two pounds, it's one pound of codfish, Two potatoes, one egg, and a tablespoon of fresh parsley, and you know, I guess you would add as much scallion as you like. I particularly like scallion, so I'm going to be generous with it, and I'm going to do two tablespoons of sour cream. That's going to add some moisture. Now we're also going to add um, some. Uh, breadcrumb. Now, the, the recipe actually calls for panko, but I'm using gluten-free. My daughter says everything gluten-free. I'm using gluten-free, and they actually look just like panko. They really resemble that. So I have found that these um, breadcrumbs work very well in many recipes. My shrimp oreganata, which I made for you, chicken cutlets are excellent with this this uh, breadcrumb. I like to use the Italian seasoned ones for those dishes, but for this particular dish, the plain gluten-free, absolutely delicious. And so they'll, they'll be very similar to a panko kind of consistency. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smash this all up. And I'm going to add my egg, which I don't know what happened to my egg. Hold on, I got to go get one. I don't know if it rolled off the counter. <laughs> so I'm going to hold off on that egg until I get this evenly smashed up. So like I said, I'm at my daughter's in North Carolina, and I'm, I'm wearing one of her aprons. That's why it doesn't have my initials on it. And uh, it's been great being here. And her kitchen is my kitchen. When I come to my daughter's home, um, you know, I kind of make myself very accessible in the kitchen. It's my love language, like I have shared with many of you. And it's my joy to prepare special things for them. My grandson was going to um, help me with this dish until his little neighbor friends came over. So I got dumped for a better option. But I'm sure he'll be in the kitchen with me again during my time here. And my daughter, my granddaughter also loves the kitchen, but she's more of a baker. But Caleb, um, he really loves doing anything that we do in the kitchen. And he loves food. He absolutely has a passion for it. So you see how that's all coming together? Now I, I'm going to make these, I'm going to keep them with enough texture in them because I like textures. I'm going to add some salt and pepper to taste. Okay, I love these. If anybody um, wants a great gift idea, I bought these for them a while ago. So it's like battery operated salt and pepper grinders, and I'm telling you, they are the best. So I'm adding that. Okay, and I'm going to just continue this mashing process. Now, if you have a masher, I'm sure my daughter has one here somewhere. I'm not in my own kitchen, so I don't always find things as easily as I do at home. At home. And, um, you know, today I was doing a message at the flourishing table on hope. And, you know, I feel that these are difficult times. And, you know, just when we think we're out of the woods, maybe, maybe, you know, something else pops up. And we, don't, we really don't know. Uh, the days ahead, the months ahead, what we're going to be facing. And I just feel like, you know, not that we want to make food our God, because we have to be careful about that, because it can become an idol. But, you know, a good meal brings people together. And, you know, I, I have always found that our, our most wonderful time as a family is just at, around the kitchen table. And I do pray that through this quarantine that more families are having that intimate time with each other you know that's usually where the conversations are less guarded when bellies are full and they're enjoying a happy meal and it just seems to put everybody kind of in a good mood and i think it's an opportunity to really be grateful i think you know um being with my grandchildren especially my grandson who has such a heart to pray and when we sit down as a family all together around the table, and he he usually does grace, and um, it just blesses my heart to see not only does he have faith, such great faith really as a, as a young child, but also that, you know, he has a grateful heart. He realizes, like, the things in life that really matter. So that's a joy. Okay, so I think this is mashed enough, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to add that egg. Where did my egg go? Here it is. Thought I lost it again. So I'm going to put that egg in here. Okay. Make sure I didn't drop a shell, which I'm known to do every once in a blue moon. Okay. And I'm going to mix that around a little bit. So I hope you're having some of those moments at your kitchen table with your loved ones. And um, again, for many who are hurting, you know, I love to honor the people that the Lord has called home by preparing a meal that was one of their specialties. And, you know, my dad actually would have loved this. He, um, not that this is his recipe, but he was all about fish cakes. 
and of anything really to do with fish. So, okay, so we have that egg in there. And now I'm gonna add this breadcrumb, which is gonna be a binder. Of course, I'm not measuring. If this is something I think you really gotta go by, by, um, okay. Actually, I think I'm supposed to, <laughs> I, didn't look at the, I didn't look at the recipe, but I think what you're supposed to do is dip them, roll them in the breadcrumbs. Okay, skip that last part. <laughs> hey, you never know what you're gonna get on the flourishing table. Okay, so I didn't put too much, so that's not gonna change anything about it. Actually, I have some recipes that call for uh, Ritz crackers broken up and put into the, into the cake, and it's a delicious recipe because they have lots of butter in them. Okay, so you see what that looks like? I'm gonna flatten it out but that would be the size, and I'm gonna roll it in that breadcrumb. And that breadcrumb is just gonna get nice and crunchy when you fry it. I mean, that was pretty easy. So again, I used that frozen codfish. Uh, if you can get fresh codfish, always best. But I would also, again, um, cook it ahead of time so it is room temperature when you're handling it. You don't you don't want to be handling that when it's hot. Let the potatoes. So this is a good thing that you can either prepare the day before, and um, and then when you're ready to make them, you uh, you put all your ingredients together and form your cakes, and then you'll fry them. So I mean, this could not be simpler. See that? And again, the breadcrumb after you form the, the cakes. So in any case, here's my first attempt at codfish cakes. I hope, um, I think they're gonna be very successful and very tasty. How could you go wrong? There's some butter, some sour cream, scallions, an egg. We also have the codfish, the potatoes, salt and pepper. And I think it's gonna really be great. I think the kids are gonna actually love these. You know, it's kind of like good old fashioned, um, fish sticks only a lot <laughs> a lot healthier and also um, fresher so and I mean you could make these in different shapes but a traditional way is is a patty and when I fry these I'm going to do it in canola oil and uh, but you know you can use you can use um, avocado or grapeseed oil I just uh, don't have that available right now I'm, I don't want to use the last of my daughter's oil because it's hard for her to get out. So again, I hope you enjoy trying these. I'll uh, get back to you with some pictures, and if they are a good success, then I will also get back to you with the recipe. But until then, I pray that the Lord of Hope brings comfort and peace to you, and you know, maybe while you're making your codfish cakes you could put on worship music or listen to a teaching on hope I always find that um, the more ways I can get the word of God in in practical ways you know he knows what's going on in our lives uh, the easier it is to not forget that he is with us so God bless you until we meet again at the flourishing table